All right, today we're going to be talking about angles and the unit circle. So let's take a look at this problem right here. This is a graph with a point at negative 4 and 4 radical 3. So if we draw the triangle, we draw a line straight from there, we end up making a right triangle here. And we know this distance here is negative 4, and we know this is 4 radical 3. And we know this is positive because of the point. And knowing that, we could actually, we see the pattern here. We know this is a length of 8 because it is a 30, 60, 90 triangle. How do we know that? Because of the radical 3 in there and the pattern that follows. So we know this is 30 degrees. So we know this is 60 because the 60 is always across from the radical. So knowing that, can we find the measure of this angle? This angle right here? The answer is yeah, because when they make a straight line, they add up to 180. So this is 120 degrees. So what we're looking at here is these things called reference angles. What a reference angle is, is the angle formed between the given angle and the x-axis. So for example, this is 130 degrees. So just basic coordinates, we know this is 0, this is 90, 180, and 270 and 360 all the way. 130 is somewhere between here and here. So we know 130 is right here. So what, how much more do we need in order to reach 180? The answer is 50. So that is your reference angle, 50 degrees. In other words, we went 180 minus 130. So same story here. For 210, we got 0, 90, 180, 270. Well, 210 is right between here and here. So this one goes all the way over here. Now the reference angle is this angle right here. So how far did we overshoot 180 to get 210? The answer is 30. So the answer is 30 degrees. So in general, if you want just a nice little reference table, whatever angle is given, if it's in quadrant one, this one, it's the same. I'm going to call that angle X, if you will. If it's in this angle, we go 180 minus X. If it's here, we go X minus 180. And if it's in here, this quadrant, quadrant 4, then it's 360 minus X. And that's basically the pattern that you use. All right, go ahead and take a look at this one. Try this one. And that brings us to the unit circle. The unit circle is, what makes it a unit, it means it has a radius of one. That's all it means, because everything's a multiple of it. That's why you see all these right here. So this right here is zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270, and this goes back to 360. So if we take a look at all those, that's basically how it goes. Now, one thing you need to know is any angle here, x is the cosine of that angle, and y is the sine of that angle for the coordinates. So for example, cosine of 0 is 1, sine of 0 is 0. And you can do that with each one of these. So the x components are always cosine, and the y components are sine. So we're, let's develop some of these angles that are in here. So it says an angle has a measure of 60 degrees with a terminal side that intercepts the unit circle at x, y. What are the values of x and y? Well, let's just draw it. So we know it's 60 degrees, so that's in this quadrant. We got a point x, y. We know this side's 1 because that's the radius of the unit circle. So we're trying to find x, y here. Well, it's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So we know that the pattern goes one, let me draw it on the side. The pattern goes one, two, radical three for this one. So we know for 60, which is, we first gotta find cosine, which is our x. Cosine of 60 would be, adjacent over hypotenuse, 
so 1 over 2, right? So if this is 2, this would be 1 half. That's another way of looking at it. The radical 3 over 2, if you use this pattern, if you just half this whole thing. And that basically gives you what it is. So 1 half and radical 3 over 2. Or you can look at this one and go, well, it's 1 over 2 for cosine and radical 3 over 2 for sine. Either way, it works. So let's talk about what a radian is. Now, when you take a look at the unit circle, you can look at circles of one way or the other. You can look at it as the rotation, or you can look at it as the distance of the arc. So what a radian is, this distance right here, since we know the radius of the unit circle is 1, the arc length here, when that is run, that is called a radian. Because this distance is the same as the radius, so it's got a radian. Okay? And so basically that's how it works. And you basically just count around. Now if you think about this, what's the distance of halfway? Well, we know a circle has a circumference of 2 pi r. And if r is 1, then we have a distance of 2r. So 360 is connected with uh, 2 pi. So how do we convert between these two? Well, there's an old, that's what I was kind of talking about, is the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. But we know a unit circle has a radius of 1, so that'd just be 2 pi. We know that that's the radius, the radian measure. But that goes with 360. We know it's 360 degrees for one full rotation. So from there, we can get a ratio. So if we have 2 pi radians for 360 degrees, we can reduce this as pi radians over 180 degrees. And we can use this right here to convert from degrees to radians. So to go from degrees to radians, all you have to do is multiply by pi over 180. To go from radians to degrees, all we have to do is multiply by 180 over pi. And that's the whole unit measure change thing. If you want to learn more about that, you can pay attention to science a little bit more. So let me show you how to do this. We're going to go from radians to degrees. So using what I just wrote, we're going to multiply by 180 because we want degrees over pi. So these cancel. So the answer would be 180 over 7 degrees, which ends up being about, because it's degrees, you actually want the number 25.7 degrees. So to go from degrees to radians, 75, we multiply by pi over 180. Now this one we want to leave as a fraction, so we just reduce these, and we end up with uh, 5 pi over 12 radians. And that's how you convert back and forth. Go ahead and try this problem. Try this problem. All right, so it says NASA is tracking a satellite in a circular orbit above Earth. It can only be tracked while it orbits through an angle of pi over 6 angle. Now, since it's a, a pi over 6, this is radians. The radius of the Earth is 6,400 kilometers. If the satellite is 320 kilometers above Earth's surface, what is the distance the satellite traveled while being tracked? So the arc length formula is theta times r, where theta is in radians. So all we have to do to find this problem is find out what theta is, which is given. It's pi over 6. And then we times that by the radius. 
Now the radius of the Earth is 6,400, but it's 320 kilometers above. So we add those up, we get 600, 720, 6,720, excuse me. Multiply those together, we get 100 or 1,120 pi, which ends up being 3,518.6 kilometers above Earth. Or traveled, excuse me, amount of distance it traveled. So that's how you do it. Radians make certain formulas a lot easier to use, and that's why we use radians. It's a good measure. Okay, go ahead and try this problem. Try this problem. 